Granny, a history mystery by Maya Idelson. In 1863, over 140 years ago, an old lady began selling apples, oranges and sweets under a gum tree near St Kilda Beach. She was neatly dressed in black with a clean white apron. Covering her head was a granny's cap with ruffles under a bonnet. Her fruit basket was decorated with pink paper. She had a wrinkled face that usually beamed with good nature. Everybody called her Granny. She sold fruit and sweets because she was poor. Her husband could not help her, for he had died. In those days, there was no pension for people who were old or sick. The tree under which Granny stood with her basket was outside the Royal Hotel on the Esplanade at the corner of Robe Street. Mr Mooney, the owner of the hotel, took a liking to Granny. He built a little shelter against the tree for her to stand under when it was cold and wet. In 1864, there was a huge storm that knocked down the wall of Mr Mooney's hotel and smashed the local sea baths. Granny's shelter was blown down and the gum tree was uprooted. Many people in St Kilda worried that Granny was now without protection from the weather. They organised a public concert in the town hall. This raised enough money to build a little shop on the Esplanade. A sign on the roof of the little wooden building read, Granny's Shop. Granny wrote letters of thanks to St Kilda Council. We still have them. The letters were written in copper plate script with a steel nib pen dipped in ink. All of her letters were signed, Granny. Every summer, crowds of people came to St Kilda for a picnic or to swim at Captain Kenny's sea baths. Most arrived by train, on buggies, or on horse-drawn trams. They walked with their children along the Esplanade and took ferry trips on the bay. The children rolled hoops with sticks, built sandcastles on the shore, and went on donkey rides. Over the years, thousands of children begged a penny from their parents to buy lollies or fruit from Granny. Granny's shop became famous. A visit to St Kilda Beach was not the same for children without a visit to Granny's stall. Granny walked with the aid of a heavy walking stick. Boys who pestered her sometimes saw the end of it, but children who were well behaved got her best fruit. On the Queen's birthday, children would gather to watch Granny hoist the Union Jack on the pole attached to her shop. Until this day, nobody knows Granny's real name. Captain Kenny's daughter thought she had been married twice and was called Mrs Anderson or Mrs Eeks, but nobody knows for sure. No one even knows how old she was. In 1872, another concert with music, singing and poetry was held at the Assembly Hall in St Kilda. 600 ladies and gentlemen bought tickets to raise enough money to smooth the remaining days of the old lady. After almost 10 years, Granny found herself too frail to continue in her shop. Her memory was also fading. She was moved to the Melbourne Benevolent Asylum, where poor people were looked after, and the staff made a fuss over the famous little lady. Other people asked if they could use Granny's shop, but St Kilda Council said, no, it was Granny's stall. Granny had gone, her stall would go too. Today, there is a crowded Sunday market where Granny used to sell her sweets. Near the spot where Granny's shop once stood, thousands of people visit places like St Kilda Beach, Luna Park and the Cape Shops in Ackland Street. Who was Granny? What was her real name? Where did she come from? When did she die? It is a mystery. Granny is long gone. Even the little children clutching pennies have all grown up and died. All we have left is some fuzzy old black and white photos. But Granny is not forgotten. The little lady in a bonnet with the wrinkled face still lives on in our memories. Newsflash! Granny's true identity discovered. The mystery of Granny has finally been solved 130 years after she closed up a shop for the last time. There is a lot of detective work in history. First, one starts with an unsolved question. Who? When? Where? Why? One clue leads to another until there is the delight of discovery. 
Pearl Donald of the St Kilda Historical Society has been searching for clues about Granny for many years. She recently discovered an old book with the exact date of the concert held in 1872 for Granny. She looked up the newspaper in the State Library that was printed on the day after the concert and found Granny's name. With her name, Pearl was able to request old records from the Benevolent Asylum that revealed when Granny died. Now that she knew Granny's name and the date of death, she was able to look up the records of the St Kilda General Cemetery and find Granny's grave. Thanks to Pearl, we now know that Granny's name was Mary Anderson. Her parents were John and Margaret Daly. She was born at County Clare in Ireland in 1788, the same year that Australia was settled at Botany Bay, and she arrived in Australia during the gold rush of 1851. She closed her shop on St Kilda Esplanade in 1874. Four years later, she died in the Benevolent Asylum on the 5th of April, 1878. Granny was almost 90 years of age, a very old age for those times. The records also tell us that her daughter, Margaret Edmonds, purchased a grave for her at St Kilda's Cemetery. Margaret died five years later from pneumonia and was buried with her mother. If you wish to find Granny's grave, go to St Kilda Cemetery and ask for number 221 in compartment C of the Roman Catholic area. It is very peaceful, but there is no headstone. You will probably be the only visitor. Few people know that this is the final resting place of Granny, the famous old apple lady of St Kilda.